die prematurely for one of two reasons. One, getting airbound. Air is the bane of our existence. We've talked about this before. Um, and we definitely don't want it in a circulator itself because these are wet rotor circulators that need the water to cool down the bearings and lubricate the bearings at the same time. So it has a feature that's going to automatically eliminate the air that's stuck in a circulator, not purge your system for you. That's what you're going to drop the 4,900 in for to get the air out of the system. But when you get an air bubble stuck in a circulator, circulators don't pump air. Okay, so um, it ain't going to move anything. It's not going to get it out of there. So we need to try to get that out. So what I did here is I took this 0015 circulator, 15E3, um, and I threw some power on it. I threw an on-off switch here just to make this demonstration easy. And I also took the casing off so that I can see the impeller. So that means if I turn this circulator on, are we just a little bit airbound? <laughs> We're very airbound, right? So I'm going to turn this circulator on. It's going to sense that the circulator is airbound. Okay, so what you're going to see here on startup, right now it's got the orange LED because I have it set up in the medium speed, all right? And when you see that flash of white, it knows it's being airbound. It knows it does not have enough resistance on the impeller itself. It doesn't feel any water on it. And so if you had air, if you had an air bubble stuck in a system, what do you normally do in order to try to get that air out? You find the closest valve to your circulator and you quickly open and close it, all right? You bang it open and closed to make a pressure differential happen. And you bang that air bubble so eventually it works its way out from wherever it's stuck to get sent back to the air eliminator to get eliminated. Well, when you see the white light flash on this circulator, it's doing that. It actually changes speeds. It's at the quick flash, it goes ba bink, ba bink. It drops its speed and then goes right back up again in half a second. I can feel that in my hands, all right? It's hard for you guys to see it. Now, if I had a little bit of water in the system and I had a big air bubble stuck, especially if you had the check valve installed and we're pumping upwards with the check valve going up, you might get a big air bubble stuck in there and you turn this on for the first time oh my god the racket this thing makes you would think you were killing the circuit it would freak out on itself and it sounds like this marble stuck in the inside if you didn't know that was there you would swear something's wrong with the circulator because the lights are flashing all over the place and you're going to turn it off and say all right, all right something's not right here okay it's normal it'll work its way out and the longest i've seen it take was about four minutes uh in my own house from testing these things from pulling them in and out in and out um one time it took about four minutes for it to get out of the system um well now when you're sitting there staring at that four minutes feels forever forever to get moving so but it's normal it'll go away if it doesn't go away or your system has that much air in it What's going to happen is that circulator is going to get hot. If it gets hot, it gets a red light. And you know the difference between red and orange. I mean, you can see that's an orange LED right now, kind of close to red. Red is drastically different. Um, and the circulator shuts off. When it shuts off, it's not dead. It didn't kill. It's not burnt up. The red light just says, hey, something's not right. You need to come fix me. And so how do you get it out of that mode? Turn the power off like I just did. Power it down, power it back up again. It will go through the function again. So actually, if you ever see a red light on a circulator, what I want you, to, or if your homeowners see a red light on the circulator, what I want you to tell them to do is turn the power off to the boiler room or lower the thermostat or whatever it is, all right? Usually it's easier just to shut the power at the top of the staircase. Tell them to turn it off for one minute, then turn it back on it'll go through that sure start feature again. And in 10 minutes, if the red, if the light is, turns red again or, or something like that, then make the trip out to the house is preventing it from happening. So, um, so that's, what you're, that's what you're looking at there. So it saves you a trip back to the job site because it might fix it. And that actually worked in my own house because I do have a piping issue. Um, it's been there since day one. I will probably fix it when I go to sell the house. 
<laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> so my 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 DHW loop gets a little airbound in the summertime. And one time I was away on a trip and my wife said, calls me up, sends me a text message and says, we have no hot water. Okay, great. Hang on a second. And I FaceTime her and she goes down to the boiler room and I start looking at it and I see the boilers tripped out and I see the circulator is flashing. It's got it's going from the white to the red to the white to the red. Uh, but we don't have any hot water. Okay. Do me a favor. And I said, oh, that's awesome. She goes, no, not awesome. We have no hot water. I'm like, yeah, but I can fix it right now, you know? And I said, turn the power off. There's a red switch right in front of you. Turn that off, turn it back on again. And sure enough, it got the air out. I sat there and listened to it and it went, whoosh, went right out. For whatever reason, it just needed to be shut down for a second. And and then it ran and got the air out. So saved me from calling somebody else to get over to, the, to, get over to my house to fix it. Very good. So that's the air side. Now, question came in from George. Four minutes seems too long. No, this, they're not dry. They are, there is some water in there. It's just an air bubble that's in there that might take a while to get out. So you're, I, you, know, you don't want it to be completely dry. No, definitely not. All right. I want you to still purge your system like you normally would. But there's still air bubbles that get stuck. All right. So, for example, I have had many conversations with people out there that hate with a passion, IFCs, <laughs> they suck. I know why. Well, because they kill my circulators. What do you mean they kill your circulators? Because when they do a service call and it's in the summertime and we don't have isolation valves or, or, or isolation flanges on either side of the circulator, well, we try to swap out the circulator quickly without having to drain and purge too much. Well. You do that, you touch the system, you start filling again, and you're going to get air stuck in there, especially if you're pumping upwards. Because you didn't run the boiler for at least four hours. If it's the middle of the summertime, when you purge a system, you're still introducing water, I mean air into the system. Fresh water coming in is going to be about 10% air. So if you did that work in the summer and it sat there, well, sure, the air is going to float up and get stuck right behind your check valve and burn them out. And the way I was able to prove that for many, uh, for a while with a few contractors, what I did, what we did at the factory was for a few projects or a few customers, we took the IFCs and we put really small holes into the green, into that green check part, really small. I mean, it was hard to see with the naked eye and that would allow the air to pass through it and out in order to get out to the system and then eventually uh, get back to the air eliminator. So, and, but it didn't get stuck in the cartridge of the circulator itself. So, let me show you the second half. The second half of Sure Start. Sure Start, uh, and we're going to exp everybody out there is going to start experiencing it now if they yes. haven't already in the last couple of weeks. Well, uh, one of the more common things about Sure Start when you get a circulator seized, it's not running, it's not moving. All right, it means the hey, we've been off all summer long. The tolerances between your impeller and the casing are really, really tight like that. Get a little bit of rust, get a solder ball, mostly rust from the summertime from just sitting there, not moving, not flowing any water, um, and the impeller seizes up. If anybody here has ever gone to a house that you know the circulator has seized up when you walk down to the basement, and you know it's seized because one, you're there because there's a no heat call, two, the circulator is really hot, hot as in the green paint starting to turn brown hot, okay? Uh, what's the first thing you do? If you've experienced this on a job site, what's the first thing you did, all right? And that's okay. I want you to tell me what you do. I know what you did, all right? It doesn't say to do this in the instructions, but I know what you did. Tell Somebody tell me what you did, all right? Kerry, you hit it right. You got it just right, all right? Yeah, you hit it with what? Whatever you got in your hand, <laughs> whatever tool you have, <laughs> screwdriver, wrench, flashlight, you give it a couple of whacks. And what you're doing is, 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 is breaking it free from what's holding the cartridge in place. So because we're not flowing any water, we're not cooling it down. So Sure Start is automatically built into that. So what I'm going to do is hold this impeller in place. I'm going to put a couple of my fingers on here to hold it in place and turn it on. 
So we're going to turn this thing back on again, and it's going to try to run, and it's not spinning. I got two thumbs on the back of this thing, gripping it tight. It's going to stop. Now we get a red and a white flash, and then it goes back to full speed, not the speed the circulator is set for, the full speed, the fastest it's going to run, and then stops. And every time you see that light flashing, what I can feel in my hands is a quick shake back and forth. And then it goes back up to full speed. And I'm going to be quiet for a second and put it right next to the microphone. There's the full speed. Mm -hmm. Stops. There's the shake. There's the full speed. Now this portion is gonna run for about 20 minutes, uh, about 100 times, all right? The short start, uh, the air side is gonna go indefinitely uh, until the motor gets too hot. Here it only runs for about 20 minutes, about 100 times if it doesn't free itself. Red LED, come fix me. Don't burn out, just come fix me and figure out what's wrong. So these are automatic correction features. You can't turn it on. You